Hi sixth graders, make sure that you have your rate of change notes template uploaded and if you're able to split screen this your with your notes and the video that will be helpful so you can have the notes and have the video side by side. So rate of change is a rate that describes how one quantity changes in relation to another. And the way that we find this out is we take the change in y over the change in x, which is what we're going to talk about when we look at the table in a second. So basically, if, if it is a constant rate of change, how much is it changing every single time? And if it's constant, it would be the same amount that it's changing every time. So if we look at this table and we want to find the rate of change from here, it says the table shows the amount of money a booster club made washing cars for a fundraiser. Use the information to find the rate of change in dollars per car. So we have number of cars versus money. The number of cars is going to be our x value and the, the amount made or the money is going to be our y value. So rate of change said the change in y over the change in x. So if I look at my x values and I see how much it's changing, I can see that it's going up by 5 every time. And then I look at my y values and I see that it is going up by 40 every single time. So what I can do then is I take my change in y, which is 40, because that's how much it's changing every time, over my change in x, which is 5, because that's how much it's changing, and it's $40 over 5 cars. 40 divided by 5 is 8, so then it's going to be $8 per car. That would be the rate of change for this situation, is that every time another car is washed, they're making $8. This table shows the number of miles a plane traveled while in flight. Use the information to find the approximate rate of change in miles per minute. This table is set up horizontally instead of vertically. But our time, which is in minutes, is going to be our x value. And our distance, which is in miles, is going to be our y value. So we're going to find the change in y and the change in x. So we're going to see that it's going up 290, to, or 290 miles every time that it goes up 30 minutes. So... And if we were to subtract these, you would find the difference was 290. And then we can see that it is going up 30 minutes each time that it is being recorded. And this is a constant rate of change because these are the same number. It's going up 30 minutes every single time, and it's going up 290 miles every 30 minutes. So that means it's a constant rate of change, that it's changing at a constant rate, or it's changing at the same rate. We've talked about rates, now we're talking about it changing, or a situation changing, but at the same rate. I know it's kind of confusing. So we take our change in y, which is 290, over our change in x, which is 30, and I would take 290 divided by 30, which is 9.6 repeating, I'm going to round that to 9.67, and then it would be 9.67, or 9 and 67 hundredths miles per minute is our rate of change for this situation. Instead of having our data being given to us in a table, we, it is shown to us in a graph. So this graph represents the distance traveled while driving on a highway. Use the graph to find the rate of change in miles per hour. So if we're looking at our graph, we can see that time is on the bottom here, and the bottom horizontal line is our x value, distance is on the left here, and the vertical line on the left is our y value. So what we can do is we can actually create a table because we're given our points on the graph, therefore we have the information that we need. So time is x, distance is y, and then I look at my points and I can see, well, this shows me that after one hour, we've gone 60 miles. Here, after two miles, we've gone 120 miles. And here, after three miles, we've gone, sorry, three hours, we've gone 180 miles. So now let's find our change. This is going up by one hour every single time. 
oops, I accidentally clicked something. This is going up by 60 miles every single time. So now we take our change in Y, which is 60, because every single time on our in our data is changing by 60. So we take 60, and remember that's miles, over one hour, because that's only going up by one hour. So I divide that, 60 divided by one is 60, so it would be 60 miles per hour. Sometimes we're, we're given information and the, the rate of change is not constant. So let's look at this. A pair of Richmond High School hockey fans counted the number of games won by the school each year. According to the table, what was the rate of change between 2018 and 2019? So if we look here, we can see that this is going down 1, up 6, down 10, up 12. So that is a not that is not a constant rate of change, which means that we cannot do what we did before in taking the y and subtract or taking all the y's and subtracting all the x's because they would be different. Here we can see it's the same because it's going up by one year every time. So in this case when it's not constant, we just need to we can find the rate of change for one set of pairs in our table. So between 2018 and 2019, over here it's gone up one year, and over here, just these two points, 3 to 15, it, it has gone up 12, or 12 games. So we take 12 games over one year, 12 divided by 1 is 12, so it would be 12 games per year, and this then would be 12. For per year between 2018 and 2019. So we have another example of a non-constant rate of change. A school administrator who was concerned about grade inflation looked over the number of straight A students from year to year. According to the table, what was the rate? When was the rate of change greater? So if we look at these numbers, we can see that it is changing at a different rate every year. So that's how we know it is not a constant rate of change. But we're going to compare 2015 to 2016 and then 2012 to 2013. So 2012 is going up one year. 68 to 87 is going up plus 19 students. And then 2015 to 2016 going up one year. And 86 to 88 is going up plus two students. So obviously 19 is a lot greater than two so 2012 and 2013 has the greater rate of change because it went up 19 students versus 2. So here we're given a graph with some data that goes along with this situation that says, in hopes of raising more funds for arts education, some parents in the Hampton School District publicized the current per-student arts education budget. We can see that this is not a constant rate of change because he, from here to here it goes way up then it goes up just by a little, then down, then way up again. So that is not a constant rate of change. So instead, like from our ta table before, we can find the constant rate of change just between um, two years. And we'll have to do that separate for each of the years. So this question asks us, what was the rate of change between 2017 and 2018? 2017, I can see it's at $32. 2018, I can see it's at $46. The change from 32 to 46 is plus $14. So we do $14 over one year, which I don't really even need to divide that because I know $14 or 14 divided by 1 is 14. So then my answer would just be $14 per year for 2017 and 2018. Here we have another example of a rate of change that is not constant, meaning that it is changing every time different data points are recorded. So our situation is worried about going over his storage limit. Juan monitored the number of undeleted voicemail messages stored on his phone each day. According to the graph, what was the rate of change between Sunday and Monday? So Sunday we can see that he has six voicemail messages. Monday we can see that he has three voicemail messages. So we can see that the change was three because six, six to three is three. But because it went down, we need to make sure that we remember that it went down and not up. 
So I'm going to write that it went down three in one day. And because it's already out of one, so it would be three messages in one day. Three over one is three. So it would be three messages per day. But again, because it went down, then we would need to make it a negative three. Because if it was th just positive three, then we would think it went from six to nine, but it went from six to three. So we need to make sure that we have a negative three for negative three voicemail messages per day. This table is comparing hours to distance traveled. If I look at the rate that the hours are going up and the rate that the distance is going up, I can see that this is going up two hours every single time that it's being compared. And then distance traveled is going up 50 miles because 50 to 100 is plus 50, plus 50, plus 50. So I know that it's a constant rate of change because the, this is the same number each time and this is the same number each time. Different numbers, obviously, but same on each side. So this is my Y value. This is my X value. The constant rate of change then would be how many miles in one hour. So I would take 50 from here and 2 from here. 50 miles in two hours, 50 divided by two is 25. So it would be 25 miles per hour is my rate of change. So this time we're given a graph with a straight line which tells me that it is a constant rate of change. And so therefore, we want to figure out what the rate of change is. So it says this graph shows how the total number of books Brian has read depends on the number of months he has been part of a book club. What is the rate of change? So what we are going to do is we're going to create our own table based on the data from the graph and then we're going to use that to find the rate of change. So when I'm finding a point on a graph, I want to look at a point that I know what the x and y value are exactly. So basically I'm going to find something that's crossing at a corner. Here I know it's exactly zero months and exactly one book. So zero months, one book. Zero months and one book tells me that when he started counting this, he had already read one book. Then if I look here, it crashes at this corner. So I can see that if I go down, that's one month and three books. So one month, three books. Then I go at this corner, I go down two months and over to five books. So now I can compare to see my rate of change. I know that this is going up one month every single time, and this is going up two books every time. So I take my Y value and put it over my X value. Two books in one month would be two books per month. And then we put that in right there. Okay, let's try another one. The graph shows how the total cost of visiting the art museum as a member is related to the number of visits. What is the rate of change? So we're going to, again, look on our graph and find easy points. So this one is right here. So zero visits is $40, meaning the membership is $40, whether you've gone or not. And then after 10 visits, because this, this point right here, after 10, and the reason I know it's 10, because I went, this is, this is intervaled differently. It's going up by 10, so I need to make sure that I look carefully on my X and my Y. So it lines up with 10, and then it lines up with 60. So after 10 visits, I would have paid $60. And then after 20 visits, is way up here, I would have paid $80. And, we'll, and then we'll stop there. So then I know that it is going up by 10 each time. And over here it's going up by 20 each time. And I take the change in Y over the change in X. So it would be $20 over 10 visits. Oops, spelled that wrong. 20 divided by 10 is 2, 
So $2 per visit. After I've paid my monthly fee, then after we've gone a certain amount of times and we're paying $2 per visit. Cross off this slide because this one we've already done in a different slide. At 2 p.m. the level of the water in the pool was 10 feet. At 6 p.m. the level of the water was 2 feet. Find the rate of change of the water. So we are going to do time here and level of water or we'll just do feet here. So at 2 p.m. it was 10 feet and at 6 p.m. it was 2 feet. So we're going to find the rate of change. 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. would be plus 4 hours. 10 feet to 2 feet would be minus 8 feet. I'm subtracting. I'm not going up. I'm going down. So it would be minus, we're subtracting 8 feet, or we could say negative 8 feet. So we have subtracting 8 feet over adding 4 hours. So I'm going to forget the, the negative right now and do 8 divided by 4 would be 2. So 2 feet per hour, but it's not actually going up 2 feet per hour. It's going down, so we need to make it negative. So it would be negative 2 feet per hour. So whenever we're given a situation, whether it's a word problem or a graph, we can always create a table with the values that we're given and then find the rate of change that way. Make sure you keep your notes handy, either saved on Notability or with you in your math folder so that you have them um, to use for practice and for further use. Have a great day.